Hey guys, I was just um, training one of my contractors on how to use shape dividers to get a particular effect that he wanted uh, in Bricks Builder. And uh, I thought I'd make this video. Now, I am in a very, very noisy environment right next to a main road in a very small office in the Cook Islands. Uh, and I'm just using my laptop and the microphone on my laptop using Crisp as a uh, noise reduction. So I'm hoping this is okay. Uh, if it's not, then sorry, but uh, this is the best I can do right now. Okay, so what I wanted to do is show you how to create and use custom SVGs as shape dividers, which is a real common kind of thing that uh, people like to do with, uh, you know, to give effect to sections, etc. Um, and we're going to use Advanced Thema and ATF um, along the way as well to show how I've just been training uh, Kevin, uh, my contractor, to do this. So let's just start by creating a structure. So we're just going to create a basic section here. In that section, we've got a block, and we're going to put a header, uh, maybe some basic text, and a button. Uh, did that go in there? It did not go inside the block. Let's just grab that and stick them in the block. I'm not sure why my little drag and drop's not working. Okay, so we're just basically putting some stuff in there. And on that section, I'm going to use my color set utilities, sorry about the dogs barking. So I'm going to use my ATF color set and we'll just set this to a color set of neutral dark, maybe dark four. There we go, dark six. So we've got neutral dark six on that one. I'm just going to duplicate that section and on this one, I'm going to set this to my neutral, uh, neutral, make that, uh, actually, we'll make this our primary. Primary, not primary. Primary D4. And we'll do that one more time. And we'll get a secondary color there. And let's do a secondary D4. Okay. So we've got three different colored sections. And what we want to do is on this middle section, I want to create a shape on the top and the bottom um, and have that color match in with the uh, sections on either side. Now, so first of all, we need to create a shape. Now, I don't have Photoshop. I use Affinity Designer, uh, not Photoshop, but you need Illustrator or Figma you can use if you want to create an SVG. But we're going to create a custom SVG. So I'm going to go into Affinity Designer, and whatever you use is up to you. We're going to create a new shape, and I'm going to make this 2,000 wide and 800 wide. Oh, it doesn't matter because we're going to export the actual size. I'm going to hit Create, and I've got a blank document. Now, in Affinity, I've got my snapping turned on, so I want to go all the way to the edges. I'm going to use my pen tool, go to this top edge, snap to that, and then I'll just click there, and I'm just going to go somewhere down here, and I'm just going to drag, drag somewhere else, drag somewhere else drag somewhere else, click up there, and then click up there. And now I'm going to get rid of my stroke, and I'm going to add just black as my color there. And then I'll just go back with my node tool, just tidy this up a little bit because it's not really looking like what I want it to look like here. Maybe that's it there. That'll do, I think. Maybe we'll just move that a little bit this way. Anyway, so here's some kind of shape that we might want. Now, uh, I think this is the same in, in Illustrator. I'm not sure, but I'm going to use my Control-Alt-Shift-S. I'm using a Windows. It might be Command uh, something. I don't know. I don't use a Mac, but Control-Alt-Shift-S on a Windows, whatever it is on a Mac. And we want to export a SVG, and we want to use the selection only. So you can see the preview here. I'm not doing the entire document, I'm just doing the selected uh, shape. I'm going to export that. I'm just going to call the shape one. Save that to my downloads. Uh, I Then what I typically do with shapes is I go to OMG SVG, uh, SVG, OMG, OMG, I think it is, SVG, uh, SVG, OMG, so it's uh, there's a link up here, which is, uh, was it Jake? Uh, C-H-O, I don't know what that is. I'll put it in the uh, description. I can't even read that there. 
uh, slash SVG OMG. We're going to open up our SVG. Uh, so that's the one we just created in Affinity Designer. Open that up. And what we're going to do is we want to remove a bunch of garbage from it. Um, the main ones we want to do is remove the view box and it will re add it back in there. So we want to remove our width and height and we want to remove the view box. Uh, and you can do other tidy up stuff in here as well. So we're going to save that now. And typically what I do is at the end of anything I've optimized with OMG SVG, let's do an underscore OMG so I know that has been optimized. All right, so we have a shape to use now. So in the bricks builder, I'm going to go to that section. I'm going to my shape dividers, add a shape divider, and I'm going to use a custom shape. Now, one thing you'll see when you use a custom shape, there's a little note here. I might just see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. A little note here where if your shape doesn't take up all available space, then add preserve aspect, aspect ratio equals none to the SVG. Now, this is important because what the SVG, it will try and scale using the aspect ratio, the intrinsic aspect ratio of your SVG. When you add this to it, it allows it to scale uh, without the aspect ratio being applied. So we're going to copy that text there. And I'm just going to go back down in size there. Okay, and we're going to head over to our file manager, and we're going to bring up that shape that we just created with SVG, OVNG. Go into the SVG tag. I normally just put it just before the style tag and paste that in there. If we don't do that, it will not scale properly. It'll end up looking really stupid in your shape divider. So we're going to hit that save on that. And go back to our um, bricks. We're going to select the file. I'm going to uh, go back to my explorer and I'm going to drag my uh, shape into there. And it'll look really weird in here because it's doing it as a square. And we're going to insert that shape. Okay, and you can see it's taking up the entire height. What we want to do with that is we want to then set a height on it. I'm just going to set a stand basic height to start with, so 100. So it's 100 pixels. And we can see here that uh, this is black, and the next section above it is a, a dark uh, neutral. So I'm going to right click on my fill color. I'm going to go to my uh, neutrals. I'm going to set that to be the neutral D6. And one thing, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, sometimes with these shapes, I can see a faint line um, just uh, at the top of this. When that happens, what you have to do is, because this is on the top, we have to set our top to say minus zero, oops, minus 0 0.5. See if that does it. Still got the shape there, 0.8. Still got the line there, so we're going to go minus one. Okay, minus one pixel. It's not updating for some reason, but there's minus one. There we go. And we've still got a bit of a line there, so the shape I created mustn't be right at the very top. Okay, minus two. Let's save that and look on the front end. Okay, so, so it's okay here. So it's just in the bricks editor that it was playing up. So let's just set that back to minus. One. Okay, so minus one is okay. All right, we haven't got the extra line at the top here. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this shape. So I'm just going to hit the duplicate there. With this time, we're going to tell it to put it at the bottom. So I'll just set, set that as zero to start with. Put it at the bottom. And what we want to do now is we want to flip on the x-axis. So turn it over the other way. All right. And now we've got it sitting on the bottom there. Um, and it's it's uh, yeah, and it's the exact opposite to the one at the top. So now it's sitting on the bottom there. We need to set the color of that to be the same as the next section. So we're going to go right click on there. And we're going to find the color of that next section, which is that D4. Hit the save. Okay, and there we go. We've got our shape divider mirrored and we've got our colors working to fit in with this section either side of it. 
Now, I'm going to give you another tip here is to not use these fixed heights because what happens with these fixed heights is if we have a look at this, see that shape gets really at, at this width here, the 100 pixels higher looks fine, but as we get to a smaller viewport width, it looks really blown out as a shape, right? So we want that to scale with the viewport. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a variable, but we don't want to have to update the variable on both of these shapes. So I'm going to, at the ID level here, I'd normally put this on a class, at the ID level, I'm going to create a locally scoped variable. And what that ver when I create a locally scoped variable, I use an underscore so I know it's local. So I go dash dash underscore shape height. And if we just set that to 100 just to check it, uh, we're going to grab that variable there, go back to our shapes. In our custom here, we're going to use a variable. The shape height, we're going to do the same on the other one. Oh, it's not actually accepting that. We need to go back to here. Maybe it's got to be PX there. Maybe Bricks is automatically, it is. So Bricks, when you put 100 into the import, it automatically assumes it's pixels. But if you're going to put it into CSS, you have to make sure you tell it it's pixels. We don't want a fixed type. We want to use one of our um, clamped space variables. So I'm going to use a space, maybe a 2XL. So we'll use our space 2XL for our height. Now it's the space 2XL on the bottom and the top. Save that. Have a look here. Once it's updated. Come on. Okay. So you can see at its width here, that's a certain height. And as we scale it down, what's happening is the height is actually decreasing. You can't notice it, but the height is decreasing because it's a clamp. So we don't end up with these really way out, blown out um, shapes um, because the clamp is changing the size as we move through the viewport size. So that's pretty much what I would do. Uh, so very, very solid tip here is if you're going to use a locally scoped variable, use an underscore. Then when you see that in your code in here, when you see the underscore here, you know that this is not in your global variables. You know it's not in a style sheet somewhere. You know it is defined locally. So it just makes it really obvious where to find those things. And that's my uh, go-to and how I manage with these variables. But that's pretty much it, how I would manage shape dividers in Bricks Builder, where it's really, really easy to control their height, really easy to control their color. Um, and um, that's pretty much it. So I hope that makes sense and is a useful for you.